four different ministry of the devil. The devil have a ministry, but there are four major ministry of the devil that you should be aware of. The purpose of the devil in the life of every believer is to destroy, is to kill, and is to steal. That's the purpose of the devil in the life of every believer. No matter what he promises you, it will end in destruction. No matter what he tells you, he will destroy you. Never believe the word of the devil. And anyone who is representing the devil, and you believe that person, you will be amazed of the results you will get later. Because the devil has destroyed many families. He has destroyed many churches. He has destroyed many relationships. And these days he's in the business of destruction. And nothing can stop him from destroying. Until he gets to a point where there's nothing to destroy, he will never stop destroying. That's why you will meet a family that that family, no one is doing well. And yet the devil will not leave them alone. If I was the devil, I will have pity and mercy on some people. If you destroy a family to a particular level, you leave that family and let nature continue. Because there are some families, whether the devil is there or not, they will not prosper. Because he has brought them to a level that no one. Imagine a family where everybody in that family is begging to eat. If the devil leaves this family, it will take them 100 years to recover from that effect. That is why sometimes you don't have to behave like you are it's ordinary. If you have ever begged to eat, you are not in normal business with anybody. There are many chains you have to break to, to, to set some people free. Even if the devil leaves, this family have to struggle before they get to wherever they are going. And that is a major problem of most families. The devil have hold captive of many families. And I think families need deliverance this morning. So there are four ministries of the devil. Four ministries the devil used to destroy family, marriages, Churches, relationship, business, companies, and everything. Four ministry. Ministry number one, accusations. Revelation 12 10. Okay. And I heard a loud voice. Say it in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Who's accused them before God day and night? He accuses them before God day and night. The number one major ministry of the devil is to accuse before God day and night. Accusation is a ministry of the devil. So Satan is misrepresenting us. He accuses us. He accuses us to ourselves. He accuses us to God. He magnifies our bad points and ignore our good deeds. He come and look at you, take your evil deeds, magnify it in your mind and in front of people and ignore your good deeds. So there are many people who are victims of accusation. Accusation is one of the ministry of the devil and he has used it to destroy marriages. He has used it to destroy companies. He has used it to destroy families. And the worst thing is that he has used it and it has entered the church and he's using it to destroy churches. People are busy accusing each other. You enter a church and what you hear, you run away. Accusations. Families are broken down because of accusations. And then the Bible says it is the ministry of the devil. He accuses the brethren day and night. So which means whoever does it is a worker of the devil. Because if it is the ministry of the devil and you are doing it, he has employed you, he has engaged you. That is his full-time ministry, accusations. He accuses, and it has become part of the fivefold ministry in the church. It's even one of the major ministry in the church. It's having an office, no one can dethrone it. It has given itself a chair, it became an office, and it's sitting down, and it's accusing people. The Bible says, on the mouth of two or three shall a matter be established. So, whenever you are bringing something with that a fax, which means it is an accusation, Whatever you say with that a fact is an accusation. Because if you think it's true, you have to prove it. Where are your facts? Prove them. If you don't have facts, you are working for the devil. Amen. I know you won't clap. Because that's your ministry. <laughs> there are some people the devil has accused them to themselves. You feel terrible. Do you know why people commit suicide? And do you know why some people, it gets to a time they have to stay away from church? It's not like no one has told them anything. The devil have magnified their bad deeds and they will never see their good deeds. Listen to me, every man you meet who is evil, there is a good part of that person. Have you ever met a wicked man who so loved the children that he would do anything to defend the children? Yet you know that this man is a wicked man, but he, can, he don't joke with the children. That's the good part of him. Every man has the good part of him. But when the devil comes to accuse you, 
He magnifies every evil and bad thing and ignores the good thing. You will never hear of anything good about the one they are accusing of. When they come to accuse someone to you, they mention only the bad things. They will not mention the good things. Because accusers don't mention good things. But some accusers have now modified their accusations. They say, you know, um, uh, Pastor Amos is good, but know that the bet has disqualified the good. That's accusation. It is a modern way of accuse, accusing men. And it has entered the church. Any church accusation is strong. That church don't grow. That church will not grow. I've been praying for this church recently. Do you know why? Because whenever two or three are standing and they are accusing another person in a church, that church will never grow. You should be magnifying and be looking for good deeds of people. And you should be talking about how to do evangelism. Not discussing people. And someone will come, this person said it. Someone will come, this person said it. Someone will come, this person said it. Where are you hearing them from? Someone called me who hasn't been in this church for a while and said I heard so, so and so. I said stop hearing. You are not, you are not here. How did you hear it? He said, I have, I have people I talk to. I said, well, thank God I don't know those people. Because if I know someone you talk to, who tells the information I'm not aware of? That person is fired. It destroys churches. Listen to me. We have to build a family and family trust in each other. Family don't accuse each other. Family support each other. They stand with each other. They cover each other. There is no place you will go and get perfect people. Look, if you are looking to work with perfect people, you will look and die. Because this one, you will never get a perfect person. The truth is that you will never get a perfect one person everyone have a weakness i know people weakness but i'm the, i don't i don't magnify them i ignore them you have to learn how to ignore people weakness to be able to work with them if you want to concentrate look you will find fault with everybody including god do you know that if you want to blame god you can blame him why am i born in ghana yes is that not true why am i in ghana why not in usa why not in canada why not in Netherlands? ghana not even in accra namangu you know namangu where we we got light five years ago. When phone came out, my parents and all our siblings and uncles, they will gather phone in a polythene bag and give you a bicycle. You will ride from that village to uh, Languency and you will charge the phone and be lying down. When they are fully charged, Nokia, it will do pim pim pim. <laughs> Amen. And it will ride full charge. So, and they will tell you that you have to be monitoring the phone because those Nokia, those of you who start you so phone for long, you discover that those days, when it's fully charged and it's still plugged, the battery will, keep, will be increasing. <laughs> and you'll be lying down monitoring the phone. Immediately they say full charge, you remove and plug another one. And they can give you five phones with one charger. So you will go in the morning and come home around in the night. And after they on and make a call, they will off and packet it. They have to use the phone for one week. Listen to me. Accusation is not good. It's a bad spirit. I have been to places where accusation was strong and it destroyed relations. It has broken families. It has destroyed companies. It has accusation have made a woman pack and left the house. Accusation have made a man run for his life. And accusation can make what you are accusing to become true. Because there are some people when you are saying they are doing this and they are not doing it. And they, it gets to a particular point they just want to do it. Because they are frustrated. I'm not even doing it. You said I'm doing it. Because as you're accusing those people, you are defining them. That's not good. Amen. Please, we have to stop accusing people. The next ministry of the devil is deception. Revelation 12 9. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's okay. Who deceived the world? Wall. Many people have been deceived. Jesus said there are three major agenda of the devil whenever he comes to your life. In John, the chapter 8, he said the devil is the master of lies. Whatever the devil says, don't believe it. Many people have been deceived. They have been deceived to believe a lie. Many have been deceived to believe the opposite. There are people, if you sit with them in the next five minutes, you will sell your house for them. They are good in talking. They have charisma. They can deceive. And living a fake life to his deception. You go and stand up by somebody can and snap and put it on Instagram or Facebook. Welcome my new arrival from Dubai last week. That's deception. You start living a lie to understand the lie become true in your head. And you now think that that's the truth. So you don't, you don't want to leave the truth now. The lie is now like an institution. It's now a very strong hold in your head. You now believe it. Have you met madmen who think that they are the richest of the whole world? Uh, hey, you know, it's a lie that has settled in their mind to understand that lie become true now. You can't tell them, or if you say they are not ready, they will kill you. 
because they don't have anything yet they believe. That's deception. They have been deceived to believe a lie. And deception starts with lies. Deception is the senior brother to lies. Deception is a bad spirit. And it has entered churches. Many have been deceived to follow the lie. They are products of deception. There are people attending churches. They know that whatever they are doing has no future. But it's like something has tied their mind. You can't preach the truth. And I've told you, any church you enter, some pastors don't preach, but some pastors preach themselves, run away. You know, you see, yeah, I didn't wear my watch today. You see this shoot? You see this shoot? It's 50,000 US dollars. I, I bought it from Dubai. You know, you know, uh, you know, the last time my bank account ever ran 100,000, I don't know the last time. You know, it's a curse to be poor. If you are poor, you are cursed. Amen. So your church members, 90% of them are struggling with poverty and you say they are cursed. And you have 100,000 lowest as bank account, yet you don't fit anybody. And there are people who go and say, Papa, give me your grace. That greedy, wicked, selfish grace, you are looking for it. It's a grace that only talk, it doesn't do. You go and kneel down, they will lay hands on you and you to your one city. Now, when we are racing fire, it's like blood donation. You can't donate. You can't let that money go. You and your money, you are one. When they say some things, you have to judge them. Amen. Third ministry of the devil is temptation. Matthew 4 3. Matthew 4 3. Mm -hmm. And when the tempter came to him, when the tempter came to him, he said, He said, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Command that these stones be made bread. Thank you. There are things you can hear as church members. But I pray that one day, before Jesus called me, I'll open up to some of you. And you know that maybe I'm one of the strongest people you have ever seen. One day someone I know was posing himself as a journalist. And his aim was to destroy this church and destroy me. And I know him. And he was posing himself as a journalist. And he would do it. And said, pray, we have to find him. Prof, pray. Let's pick him up by the spirit. We have to find him. Hey. Jesus must come back. He has to rapture us. Very early, so that we just go and rest. Amen. And then I said, mm ma. Amen. Now, when I find out who that person was, I didn't even let that person know I know. We still relate. Fine. I said, okay. Let's leave it like that. Let's move to the next agenda of our life. Now, one thing about the tempter is that he want to tempt you to prove a point. And he will always do everything to make sure that you prove that you are the one you claim you are. How many of you have ever been tempted to prove that you are not useless in your family? Like my brother called me. When were we in Tamale? Tuesday, right? Tuesday, we were in Tamale, he called me. And that day after I dropped the phone, something was telling me to go and buy and buy him. <laughs> But the Holy Ghost said, come on, hold it, hold it, hold it. I said, okay, I have to hold it. Hold it, man. So, ah, I couldn't breathe. I said, no problem, it is well. This is someone who is tempting me to prove a point. Oh. That time is coming, you can't buy land. Oh. I said, there's no time coming, me. I can't buy land in Alergo. Even in Accra, I'll buy land. I have to talk of Nalergo. I said, let them build. We'll come and push them down and buy them. Buy and buy their generation. Now, 
they are tempting you to undertake projects and things that are not necessary. They want you to prove a point. You of all people, this is where your mother is living. Call me. That I have to do, I have to buy TV for my mother. I bought her TV. They say I have to buy her a decoder. I bought her a decoder. They say I have to buy her this. I bought her that. One day I got home, the TV. My mother don't even know how to own the TV. When I got home and we were sitting there, I said, So my mother don't know how to own the TV. Why is that? I have to buy a TV for her. So my mother has to now go and call somebody to come and now own the TV. So I asked her if you want to watch who that so which means what she wants to watch and there's no one. It has to be sitting like that. And there's one to own it and off it. You see, they have tempted me to throw my money away. They have thrown it away. Tempter. That's one aspect of the devil. He tempts you to prove a point. The other aspect is that he enticed you to fall into trouble. The devil will tempt you and he will come with something you are interested in. Something you love. He will bring something that he knows that you need. How many of you fast? When you are not fasting, you are not hungry. But after you fast 10 a.m., you want to die. When you are not fasting, you can be, you can work from morning till night and you are fine. But the day they declare fasting in church, 6 a.m., the devil said you must eat. <laughs> Amen. And then you will also meet food on the street. You, for the first time, Koshe will attract you. Ma this master they are carrying around, you don't see them. When you fast, that master will attract you. And you will break the fast. You won't take a prop. You can break the fast with popcorn. And yet, you are not still eating. No. You, you have just broken it. And that's it. He don't want you to eat. He don't even want you to be alive. Why would he want you to eat? He wants you to break the fast. It's not like he's so concerned about you. And some people, he will tell you that your health, your sickness now, your, it's not good for you to fast. You have to get something and eat. Before you realize, boom, you have bad things. That's the devil tempting you. A young man, you'll be on 30 days fast. On the 13th day, the lady you have been chasing will appear without an invite. I said, I'm here. I said, Brother Joshua, what you have been telling me here, I have, these days I have been thinking about it. I think, um, mm -hmm. so now you are now between the spiritual and the physical. God is pulling. The devil is pulling. So you are standing. Where do I go? So you now do panic pay, tinkaninya biya, zaranya biya, amikabi, pa, nana pay, eya. Amen. Oh, Jesus. The devil knows how to entice. Do you know he came to Jesus at the time he was hungry? He said, I know the Son of God. Turn that stone to bread. That's temptation. Turn it to bread. And whenever you try to prove a point, you end up sinning against God. That's it. Never try to prove a point. Don't try to prove that you're a prophet. Don't try to prove that you can do it. Don't try to prove that you're a rich man. No. Don't buy things to prove a point. Don't do things to prove a point. Ignore them. At the right time, they will fall in right places. You'll be tempted to do things that are not necessary. Look, whenever you are tempted to do something, you have to look at it the second time. I just say, if you want to prove a point, I am not stupid. I can do it myself. It's dangerous. The last ministry of the devil is hindrance. In Paul's letter to the believers in Thessalonica, he says, We wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 18. Satan hinder us. Okay, you can read it. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, uh -huh. once again, but Satan hindered us. But Satan hindered us. Okay. Now, hindrance is the ministry of the devil. You want to do it, he hinder you. How many of you wish you could have given God 100,000 Ghana's day? Let me see your hand up. You wish that, right? 
but you are not able to. Do you know why? The devil have hindered you. It's a hindrance. And the funny thing is like, it's like those who have the money don't love God. Those who, have, who don't have the money, they are those who love God. So you see, you want to do it, you don't have it. Those who have it will never do. So you are not angry. Well, it's not your money. You just have to be angry in your spirit. Console yourself. Settle the matter with yourself. Because it's never your money. Because there are some people, if they were rich, the church would not suffer. The church would not suffer. They can give everything to the church. They can give everything to the church. But they don't have it. That's why the devil will keep hindering you. Because he knows your intention. But look, if your mind is to become rich and go to Dubai and chill with three slay queens and you're not becoming rich, it's not the devil, it's not God who is, it's not the devil who is hindering you. It's God. God is the one standing in front of you and saying you are going nowhere. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. One thing about uh, men is that some people they love God and they are loyal to God immediately they get money Boom. they will forsake God and forsake everything that has to do with God and no one can talk to him those of you who have done evangelism before have you realized that it's easy to evangelize a poor man than a rich man a rich man sometimes you don't know where to start and whilst you are talking they are looking at you suspecting you your dress whether you are spying them so it's like, once you are trying to save the soul of that person, he too, he's having mercy on you. It's very hard to evangelize to people who are, not, who are not broke. Sometimes it's good. When they have troubles, it makes it easy. Number one is what? Accusation. Number two, deception. Number three, temptation. Number four, hindrance. So the devil will hinder you. Know that. Have you ever made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life? If not, pray this prayer and start a new life in Christ. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I admit that I am not right with you, and I want to be right with you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. The Bible says if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now that you are born again, you can worship with any Stars of Heaven church close to you or any Bible-believing church. Locate Stars of Heaven Ministries in Bolgatanga on top of the Ghana News Agency building. Sundays, first service, from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Second service, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And evening services from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Midweek services on Wednesdays from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesdays for counseling from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more inquiries, contact the numbers on your screen. Thank you.